Hello, hello, and you join me at People's Ford here in Edinburgh, and today I'm going to be driving the Ford Mustang Mach-E, so stay tuned for this video. So let's go ahead and jump inside the Ford. Now we've got the numbers on the side like we've seen in previous Ford models to lock the car with a code. Push this little button here, door pops open and you're going to use this as your handle to step into the vehicle. The door cards up front are nice and plush, you know, up here it's got a vinyl-esque material that's softly padded, a little bit of silver strip, and in this particular model does have this material going on here, which is like an Alcantara suede material. Being old sound system with this fabric speaker grill in black with the white stitching there, and this little lever here to unlock the door, like we've seen, which is a nice mechanical release. And then down here, we've got a little bit of storage, or maybe like a bottle of water or something, and other items can go in there. Now this is denote and we do have a GT model with the door plaque with the little Mustang logo to remind you what you're driving and we're going to see that Mustang logo throughout the cabin. So there's no obvious Ford logo in front of the driver here. We do have the Mustang Ford horse logo here. And then in the centre here we also have the GT debossed into the rather armrest. Now there's a lot to take in on the mac -E. I really like how the, a lot of the materials are texturised and we've got a lot going on. They've put a little bit of thought into this. Like up here we've got the fabric, we've got this kind of hexagonal geometric print going on down here and then we've got more fabric. Kind of feels like a, I don't know, like a tweedette kind of feeling material. It's, uh, and again that's the way it's stitched. So over in the so over on the right, we do have your light controls all the way up or off, auto, full beam, etc. And then your brightness for your instrument display, traction control off, and then your front D mist up front there. Over on the right, on the door, we do have your memory seating, one, two, and three, as well as your door lock and unlock. We do have all round electric windows, and then the buttons to adjust your mirrors on the right there. On the right hand side of the steering wheel is your volume controls for your radio and your phone and on the left is your things for your cruise control, your speed limiter, etc. Now in front of the driver we do have this little instrument display, it's quite rectangular and narrow but it does a good job of giving you information that you need. We can see right now we're getting 176 miles of 59% range. This car is the GT model so 0 to 60 is claimed in about 3.6 seconds so it's quite a fast vehicle. I like the fact we've got PRNDL that you'd have seen in a more conventional combustion vehicle from back in the day and that just shows you what gear you're going to be in. Now the gearing is controlled through this little shifter down here, rotating knob so you can put into reverse like so. You've got a 360 camera and a reversing camera, pretty clear and good quality and all the way to the right for drive if required. Let's leave it in park for the moment. We do have the reversing assistant, which I had a variation of this on my Ford Mundial back in the day, and it just helps you be able to park the car if required. And then we've got electronic parking brake and the hazard button. Two decent sized cup holders, wireless charger, and plenty of storage underneath because this is a floating shelf. This screen here is Ford's sync system. I won't go into it too much today. However, it is quite large and as you can see, it is portrait style, almost Tesla-esque. We do have a big home button at the top there at any point. It can take you to any pieces you wish to direct into. Then we've got sketch pads, there's wee games there you can play. And then you've got things like your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is going to be important for some buyers. It also has the thing in your navigation. If you put an address in, it's going to calculate if you need a charging point en route. So I do like that feature as well. And then down below is where your climate's going to live. So things like your fan speed, you can touch that. And then you rotate this knob here to control the speeds of the fans. Same for your heated seats, etc. They can be automatic or touch of a button for free stage. Like so, heated steering wheel. And then up here is where you can control your airflow. I quite like the infotainment graphic as well. You can see with the direction of air going through the cabin. And you've got the option again for things like your front electric window defrost, which is a nice neat touch for our winters here in the UK. So you're going to be impressed with the quality of the materials on the dash. You know, I think this is quite a nice feeling car. And I said visually there's a lot going on. And then this wouldn't be a Cars of Glasgow video without a glove box reveal. As you can see, softly damped and pretty spacious with the amount of room in there. You can get quite a lot in there, so it's quite deep as well. So that's a good size glove box up here. Up above, we do have your visors there for putting your sunglasses in. 
Up above we do have this little storage here for sunglasses and we've got physical buttons here for your interior lights you can turn on and off. Decent sized visors with a little bit of lighting in there as well which is nice to see and a little bit holder there as well for things like your cards and things like that. What I quite like as well is when you open the door your legs aren't going to get dirty because the bottom of the door goes around the sill so when you step out your legs are not going to catch any of the mud out from the winter road. So we'll go ahead and have a quick look in the rear of the Mackie. Now what's quite cool is you push this button here, the door pops out and it's like so. So that gives it an overall quite flush appearance on the rear because there's no big handle there. Now you'll notice in the back of the car we do have seating for free. Of course we've got a little armrest back here, map of Scotland and we've got your little cup holders in there. Now if I jump inside, we do have quite a flat floor here which means I'm able to sit in the middle, I'm 5 foot 11, decent enough knee room and decent enough headroom and you've got a decent view out front. And you have a decent view out front with the greenhouse around you there. I'm 5 foot 11, I've got decent enough headroom, as you can see the roof there is slightly touching the hair in the middle, however, if I move across to the outer seat, I do have a little bit more room than I did perched up in the middle seat there, and we do have a lot of indentation in the ceiling that's been cut out for my head. So overall it passes for me fitting behind myself at 5 foot 11, behind a 5 foot 11 driver. And behind here, this is just rubberized, so it's going to be easy to wipe down if you've got maybe kids' feet and things like that there, but there is no map pockets behind either of these sporty looking seats. But we do have a grab handle up here, a little light, and we do have a nice b and speaker with the little door release down here. And a little bit of storage inside the door itself for items. Same material you've seen up front with the kind of Alcantara-esque material here. And then with a little bit of this kind of rather here with the white stitching. So this Maki is denoted as a GT model. As you can tell with the GT badge, the regular Maki gets a Mustang badge. Now there's two ways to open it. You can either push the button or we can push the button on the fob twice. Like so, automatically releases. And as you can see, we've got quite a cavernous space with a decent height. And I'm 5 foot 11 and got quite a good road floor height straight in. Not too much of a lip and we've got a little bit of storage underneath for maybe other items, but overall a nice decent squared off size. Now I would just say, because this is one of those coupified SUVs, bear in mind the items you're going to carry in case you want anything boxy, maybe look at something like the new Ford Explorer, however this does give you that fastback appearance and you're going to lose a little bit of practicality if you're to carrying taller items. We can fold the seats 60-40, which is quite good as well to have split folding rear seats. And overall back here, not too much else to say, we've got a little 12-volt power outlet, tie-down hooks, a little interior light with the little Mustang logo on it, which is quite a neat touch. But yeah, that is the boot of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And of course, push this button and it will close automatically. And to pop the front trunk or front boot, pull that twice, like so. as well. It does have a little child escape here so if you happen to lock somebody in here they can push that button to get out. And we've got the Mustang up here. It's fairly weatherproof so I think it's going to be ideal for putting charging cables, wet dog leads, whatever it may be. And also you've got your washer flat there. So all right we're driving the Mackey GT. Now just set it off into drive and let's see how we get on. So first thing off the bat, the steering is nice and light, you know, with the around town driving. Quite easy just to get myself into the car and go. I like the visibility out front as well. Set up quite high, probably kind of the height you'd expect of maybe a Ford Cougar or Toyota RAV4 or something like that. I'm a little bit taller than the T-Rock Volkswagen in front of me today. Now suspension in this car, although we're riding on quite large alloy wheels, it's actually riding fairly compliant and comfortable. It was a lot more comfortable than I was expecting and a little bit more comfortable than some of the other EV crossovers that are 
performance orientated that I've drove recently. My brakes are definitely good there, just had to put them on. And the good thing about this particular Mackie is you feel like you're just driving a Ford. So if you're coming out of like a Focus, a Mondale, maybe a Cougar, something like that, some of the controls are going to feel very familiar, especially some of the like bings and bombs are very Ford. Now out with that, I do like the fact that, you know, the punch acceleration you get from an EV is very smooth and the power delivery is what you'd expect. Now this GT model is the performance top of the range variant. So you are going to see about 480 brake horsepower, 634 pound feet of torque, and you're gonna get about 320 miles of range claimed on the performance model. I would go for a lesser model if you're looking for more range. Uh, and you don't need the outright performance. Now the Mackie GT has a 0 to 60 of a claimed 3.7 seconds, which is definitely not to be laughed at. That is lightning acceleration. And probably you'd expect from the Mustang name being a muscle car with its heritage. Now this car is achieving around three miles per kilowatt hour today, which is pretty all right in fairness, considering it is a performance model. I would probably expect closer to four if I was driving one of the more energy efficient variants. But overall, it's a decent car and this particular vehicle is on offer at the moment with people's Ford. So if you are interested in picking up a Mackie, it's worth having a nosy to see what they can do for you. Um, the kind of person I expect to buy this is maybe somebody coming out of another Ford. These vehicles are also on mobility, so if there's anything you need the car adapted for, that can happen as well, along with the Ford Explorer's also mobility. And yeah, overall, it's a good punchy EV. I would probably go for a non-performance model if it was myself, just get a standard like all-wheel drive. Mackey and yeah you're going to get the, the good looks, you're getting the Ford technology, you're getting the benefits of driving an EV and yeah it's got a good number of quirky feelings like pushing the doors and things like that which just make the car feel a little bit different. I do like however the car is you know quite well built, you know it's a lot more well built than or premium feeling inside than for example my Ford Mondial Estate I had back in the day. Um, so I would get that notion of a not premium feeling EV out your head when you see one of these. Uh, they definitely do feel quite upmarket and premium. And as the heated seat, the heated windscreen, the heated steering wheel are all going to be ideal for our Scottish winters. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching this video on the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. It's been a joy to bring it to you and yeah, just a quick drive of this car. Thanks to People's Ford in Edinburgh for loaning me this car and I will see you next video. Any questions, comment below, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Ciao.